Hello and welcome. You're watching FII. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Now, through the course of the pandemic, we've had several firsts. Our lifestyle has changed. Our dependence on digital gadgets has increased as well. And it's not just for adults who are working from home. It's also for kids who are studying at home, playing at home, training for new things at home, even partying on Zoom calls at home. What does this eventually lead to? It leads to a lot of strain on your eyes. And through the course of the past couple of months, we've constantly have had FII viewers write to us and say, well, digital eye strain, how can we fix it? So we thought, let's, well, bring you a program to do just that. And we discovered in our research that there's something called a computer vision syndrome. What exactly is this? How to fix it? We'll take you through in our explainer. So take it note very carefully. All right, so what exactly is computer vision syndrome? Well, it is essentially caused by prolonged use of digital screens. You could be looking at your television, your phone, your iPad or any other gadget, for example. It is also known as digital eye strain as well or a computer eye strain as often doctors refer to it. The symptoms are quite simple. You have eye fatigue, you have dry eyes. It eventually later on gives you headache as well. It can develop a computer vision syndrome if you view digital screen for more than two hours at a stretch. Now, I'm sure all of you are wondering, well, we all sit in front of our computers for a limited at least minimum of eight to ten hours. So definitely all of us have it. Well, there is a trick to it. So listen in. Other risk factors also for digital eye strain include stuff like looking at digital screen every day. Poor lighting in a room can cause this. A glare or reflection on the digital screen. For example, if you're sitting uh, with a uh, tube light behind you or a source of light behind you, natural light as well, and it's constantly reflecting on your screen, that is a problem. Uncorrected vision issues, that is a problem. I certainly face that. Incorrect pres uh, prescription eyeglasses also need to be watched out for. Incorrect viewing distance, and this is very important. And the angle as well of your posture against the screen is very, very important. How to fix it, we'll tell you. But first, we try to look at who does it impact the most. And the studies that we saw were very troubling. According to the survey of India Journal in the ophthalmology January 2021, so this is very, very recent, they talked about how the digital eye strain is impacting children. Duration of digital device has gone up versus the pre-coded era and look at the numbers over there it's gone up almost three folds over there which is worrying there is 6.9 percent use of digital devices which is over five hours in the covid era compared to what it was earlier just 1.8 percent most common use device according to the study that we did was of course smartphones and it's not all for bad purposes it's not just gaming it's actually studying there as well it is meeting and greeting with family members as well who are sitting far away and you don't meet them so often now attending online classes well that's gone up and contributing to the maximum of these numbers going up and the most common symptoms in kids if you're a parent that you should be watching out for and this is important is itching is headache is double vision seeing halo around objects as well a child often might not be able to tell you might just say that he's not feeling well so you have to watch out for these symptoms watch if he if the child is rubbing their eyes too much etc and then get the eyes tested and of course see a doctor who will tell you more on this now prevalence of this of course has been seen in kids it has been seen in uh, adults as well but children continue to be most impacted several studies that we are showing you right now on your screen right now to tell you on how severe really this problem has become but if you're wondering what to do then there is no getting out of this right well we have some quick fixes for you something that can be easily adapted in your day-to-day -day life as well and something that you literally need no device for watch this Hi there and welcome to my working station. By now all of you know that I have a standing desk that gives me a good posture and improves my productivity as well. But what till date and especially during the pandemic has taken a toll on me and I'm sure on all of you as well is the strain that you feel on your eyes. 
I mean, look at the screens. I have the computer, I have the TV. If not, I'm on my phone. So my eyes are constantly overworked and they feel the strain. So five quick exercises that you can do anytime, anywhere really, to give a bit of a breather to your eyes. The beauty of these exercises really is that all you need is clean hands. So let's get started with exercise number one. I'll just have to take off my specs for that. Clean arms and clean palms and look at this area right under your thumb. Place it here on top of your brows and just circulate. Small easy motions clockwise and anti-clockwise. You see a lot of babies do this very involuntary in when they wake up to try and relax themselves as well. Number two, take the middle finger and press underneath your brows. And this one instantly gives you a feeling. Once done with this, come near your eye. Don't go inside at no point are you pressing your eyes directly, but near your, uh, your tear duct, just press very lightly, pulsate. Then number four, and this is my favorite, just do this, just around your eye socket. You never go close to the eye, you never go directly on the eye either. Eyes are gonna love you for this. And then number five, and by now all of us know this, create some heat in your palms and just rest on your eyes. Cup it up nicely. You're likely to see some flashes in the beginning and then eventually as it goes dark and black, I'm already feeling better. Try it out and let me know how it went for you. Well, while you were watching that, I actually tried it one more time. It's really that easy to do. But the important thing to remember here is another very quick fix formula, which is a 20-20-20 formula. And this is a rule that has been followed by several experts as well and advised. It's very simple. Every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break. And in that break, do not watch any digital screen but just take your vision 20 feet away. Watch something that is not throwing light at you, but is just lying out there. Just try this out for a couple of days and you will see a very significant change in how you're feeling with your eyes as well. All right, so having understood that, how much is the reliance on digital screens going to be? Well, it's only going to increase in the coming years and ages also perhaps. So what adaptations should we need to be doing at this point? For that, let's go to our panel. Joining us on the program today is Dr. Sanjay Dhawan. He's a senior director in HOD at Eye Care at Max Hospital in Panchil. Thank you so much for your time. Doctor, Dr. Harsh Vardhan is with us. He's a cataract cornea and refractive surgeon at Fortis uh, uh, Hospital. And we also have Mahipal Sachdev with us, chairman of the Center of Sight. Uh, thank you all for joining us and giving us your invaluable time. I'll begin with Dr. Sanjay Dhawan. Uh, Dr. Dhawan, the dependence that we have on digital screens is not going to go down. I mean, all of us have apps now which track our screen time and all of us are very, very ashamed to actually say that number out as well. And that's just your phone. We don't even recognize how much time is going out on other screens. Can you tell us what is a fix over here and what can be done? I keep hearing about how even if you don't have a number, wear a glass at least, wearing glasses. Is that a solution? So the various things which one can uh, take care of to ease out the stress of the screen. One is that while working on the screens, keep it as far from the eyes as is comfortable. Keep it high up so that your back and neck is straight. And as you already said, that a standing workstation is better than a sitting workstation because it keeps your posture correct. And uh, the background illumination and the screen illumination should not be too vastly different. The screen can be only slightly brighter than the background, but there should always be some light in the in the background in the room. Then make a conscious effort to blink more frequently. Mm -hmm. Every 15 minutes, you must sit back, close your eyes, turn your head back, shut your eyes for a minute, giving eyes a rest. Every hour, one must take a longer break of about five minutes or so. So this is the 20-20-20 formula, which is said, it sounds very nice. You know, it's a nice phrase, 
but it does not really work as well. You need to take more breaks. So, so every 15 minutes, one minute break, mm. every hour, at least five minutes break in which you can actually stretch your body, go for a quick walk, you know, drink some water, stretch your body and mm. take, take more rest. And besides this, a good night's sleep is extremely important. You know, a six to eight hours of sleep is required. And there should be at least one day in a week where you don't look at any screen at all. Besides this, well, you need to do possible? regular... <laughs> Is that possible well, to have? Well, we can zero always have a screen-free like weekend. A you know, I'm a very strong proponent of screen-free weekend. You know, we can when we can have a, a fasting once in a week. Why can't we have a screen-free weekend in a week? Hmm. So, if we want, we can actually work towards it. Also, cut down the screen time to what is really minimum required. And hmm. a larger screen kept further away is better than a smaller screen kept close by. So, phone hmm. screen is the worst screen to use because not only is a small screen you put it close by, but you bend your neck down, so your hmm. posture is also very, very bad. Right. And I keep reminding our viewers as well, often when we're looking into a screen, your posture is like this. So you have to take yeah. your shoulder back and down and that is what is really required to be done at a regular basis to actually get that correct. But you've said something very troubling uh, to me, doctor. You were actually saying that 20 minute, minutes of break every 20 minutes is not enough. You should actually increase it. That is yeah. another thing altogether. I don't know if that's a pandemic impact at this point. Let me bring in Dr. Harshwardhan. Uh, Dr. Harshwardhan, your thoughts on how things are, and especially with kids, these numbers are so troubling. Could you take us through what, uh, I mean, I don't want to scare parents watching this program right now, but very realistically, kids and this entire generation of pandemic kids who have only seen school on screen and only studied on screen and played on screen and caught up with family and friends on screen, what lies ahead for them and what are then the systemic changes that we need to do in our lifestyle? Yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, well, as you rightly said, it's a pandemic within a pandemic. So uh, we have a situation here that uh, in one of the European studies, it was found that uh, around 68% of kids by the age of three years, they are doing some kind of uh, uh, digital activity. And uh, out of them, around 54% are actually doing some online courses also. So uh, this is uh, just uh, staggering to know. And uh, we are now just sitting at the start of a bigger pandemic, which will come in the next few years, uh, right from the kids up to the adults. Even uh, if they have, they have done a study where they found that even the older age people are now, uh, there has been a uh, doubling of the rate of uh, number of people who have now started using computers even after the age of 70. Right. So we are looking at a very uh, gr grim situation and uh, we have to take some uh, measures right now. What are those measures? Can you suggest some? Well, as you, right, as you just pointed out the various precautions, including the basic ones. See, digital eye strain is a broad term. It uh, has two parts. One is the external symptoms which are related to dry eyes. Mm -hmm. and the internal symptoms which are related to muscle fatigue. So when you have muscle fatigue, you end up with double vision, blurred vision, loss of focus, headache, mm -hmm. uh, pain behind the eyes, on the mm -hmm. brows. And uh, external symptoms like dry eyes include grittiness, uh, sensation of something being inside or watering of eyes many a times, so, uh, and redness. So these are the various uh, things that we have to deal with in, a two, in two different ways. For mm. example, for the dry eyes, we need to use regular lubricating eye drops, mm. taking breaks every 20 minutes or 30 minutes as mm. uh, uh, the, uh, Dr. Dhawan already or, pointed or out. Or more is what Dr. Dhawan is saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So basically, uh, 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 it's 2020 or 3030 or even 4040. Now, for example, children who work in, uh, who are studying in classes, they're lecture is for 40 minutes so you can take a break every 40 minutes but that mm. break has to be longer obviously right and uh, apart from that uh, blinking of eyes very frequently the normal blink rate is around 10 to 15 times a minute but in front of the led screen people blink only three to four times in a minute so you can make a rule for example every time i press the enter button i'm going to blink my eyes mm. something like that so that makes it easier to remember and uh, uh, along with that, uh, you need to have a good night's sleep, lots of antioxidant diet like red and green fruits and vegetables, mm. adequate hydration, and also general exercises, meditation, mm. all these things together will help you 
uh, and your eyes to become more healthy. Right. So I want to uh, go yeah. across to Dr. Mahipal as well at this point. And uh, Dr. Mahipal Sachdev, I just wanted to understand there is the LED screens. There is a huge debate online about what plasma uh, reflection does to your eye versus what an LED reflection does to your eye. Uh, can you throw some light on what exposure to uh, these rays can do to us and is there a way of avoiding it? There are lots of products out in the market as well. I just don't know how reliable they are about putting screens on your computer, putting screens on your phone or wearing glasses, for example. Is this something that can be adopted? Well, uh, good evening, uh, Sonal, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, what you are saying is absolutely correct. Uh, the issue is the short wavelength, high energy waves that are being emitted from these LED screens. And they cause primarily two issues. The first issue, as has been, uh, as has been said uh, by Dr. Harsh, is that uh, there is the problem of dry eyes. Okay, mm -hmm. the one is inadequate blink. The other is these uh, photochemical damage that is caused by this as regards dry eye. The second thing is that entering the retina, the eye, and going on and causing photochemical damage to the retinal cells. Hmm. And this uh, is supposed to increase the incidence of macular degeneration. So that's going to be a long-term effect that is going hmm. to be there. So yes, there are there is serious thought even when we are doing cataract surgeries, etc. And every glasses that we are wearing, they are having UV blocker uh, blockers in them. Right. So what is very very important is that these harmful short wavelength high energy waves should be hmm. blocked, hmm. and they are blocked either by putting something in front of your screen or something in front of your eyes. I see. So in front of your eyes, you can wear zero power glasses if you don't have a glass, or otherwise you can have a UV blocker uh, glass, or you can have what like. Uh, uh, what is now being used, uh, though the evidence is not 100%, but blue cut glasses, which again block, block these high intensity light. All so right. these so are a couple of the things. Basically, create sorry? a filter. Basically, create a yes. filter between your eyes and the screen and block yes. it by these uh, glasses or a screen, whatever is preventing yes. those rays, is what you're saying. Very important there. I have to slip into a very short break. When we come back, we'll talk again on the focus. And especially that is going to be on kids, the heightened exposure that they're getting and this generation on the whole is getting. That's coming up on the other side. Welcome back. We're discussing digital eye strain and what it can really do. And we're talking solutions on FII. Let's go back to our panel on that. And Dr. Dhawan, specifically, I can ask you this. A lot of people watching right now want to know what is it that I should go and ask my optical person with? If I go to a store and I say, give me this glass, what is this glass that you're really looking for? And could you give us in two parts this answer for adults and for kids? So as uh, Dr. Mahipal pointed out that it is the low short wavelength light which needs to be cut out uh, from the screens, which means the UV light and also possibly the blue light. Because some recent studies have shown that uh, excess exposure to blue light can also be harmful to the macula causing macular degeneration. UV and time. blue light is what you're saying. Blue light. So okay. uh, when you go to, and, and for that matter, any glasses that you wear will definitely cut out the UV light and blue light to some extent. But you can specifically ask for UV light filter and blue light filter glasses, hmm. whether it is young kids or adults. If you have a spectacle powers, if you have a repetitive error, then it should be as per your eyes power. Otherwise, it can be simply plain glasses. Uh, and right. uh, and also, as I said, that, that the screen brightness should be only slightly brighter than the background brightness. Hmm. Should, the screen should not be too bright or too dark. Should not be too bright, should not be very close as well. Dr. Harshwadhan, I have last one minute and I quickly wanted to get a word from you. I read this very famously somewhere that the distance from the screen should be as much as you can give a high five to. So maybe kids can learn that, that keep your screen at a distance that you can actually give high five to. So should be the length of your hand. Is that correct? Yes, the screen uh, for a desktop should be around 25 inches away and uh, for, a, for a mobile it should be around 32 centimeters away. Hmm. Apart from that, uh, if you watch TV, it should be around 6 to 8 feet away. Along with it, I would suggest that you should always visit an ophthalmologist to firstly get your eyes checked whether there is power or whether there is some squint or hmm. some convergence deficiency, some accommodation problem. All these also can cause digital eye spray. So it's not just the light or the 
uh, dryness that causes it. So hmm. first get your eyes checked from a good ophthalmologist along with the glass right. power and then you can do all these other right. I'm precautions. I'm sorry I'm rushing on this because I have a very little time but Dr. Sajdev, very quickly, are there some easy, easily available eye drops that one can pick up to ensure and to cure actually dry eyes issues at home for adults and kids? Okay, the first thing I'll just wish to, uh, before I answer the question, is what Dr. Harsh said, that there could be an underlying disease, there could be something like a hypermetropia and normal optical stores do not dilate in a child to check their power, which is totally incorrect. A child may be having a hyperopic power or a cylindrical power, which would need a cycloplegic refraction. That means after putting eye so drops... So, go to your doctor to and get it proper. checked there and not yes. at an eyesight center. And now, Got from that, the yeah. drops perspective, there are some over-the-counter drops and there are some specific drops which are lubricant eye drops. And these lubricant eye drops can be used and we prescribe. We are prescribing it very often. Hmm. Apart from the digital eye screen, the environmental pollution is also increased the incidence of dry eye which, that has been there. And dry eye is a significant causative factor of digital uh, factor for digital eye strain. Hmm. All right, gentlemen, so I am running out of time, so I have to leave it there. But thank you so much for all your inputs on this very important issue which all of us are facing. Really, nobody is uh, gotten away from any sort of digital strain. That's it on FII. Tell us what you want to hear next on the program, and we'll take up that issue as well. Bye for now.